Uh, Simon, big news in the world of tennis. She's got 23 Grand Slam tournament singles titles, four Olympic gold medals, now at the age of 40. It seems that Serena Williams is close to retirement, that uh, the announcement will come at the US Open, which begins this month. Now, Mr. Jordan... Evolving. Dan, Danny, you're, you're the same, actually. On this show, when we talk about young footballers, one, one of the worst aspects of being a young footballer is that you are held back by pushy parents. Pushy parents. In, in, instead of pushing you forward, they end up pulling you back because... People get fed up with them. They're too pushy. Mm. Maybe not so here. If ever there was evidence that the father of Venus and Serena did a damn good job when these two are young, surely it's him. Richard Williams is said to have wrote up, written up an 85-page plan and started giving lessons to Venus and Serena when they were four and a half taking them to practice on public tennis courts. In 95, Williams withdrew his daughters from a tennis academy and coached them himself, mm -hmm. claiming that he would turn them into world champions. Which is what he duly did. I mean, there's a difference between pushy parents and parents living vicariously through their children and seeing their children as commercial opportunities. One of the things that I've always pushed back against, and when we've had other people come in here from, from the academies like Steve Sidwell and other people that work inside academies, they've always said one of the difficulties they have is the parents' expectations rather than the child's and managing the parents. And of course, parents will often disagree with coaches about the quality of experience the children are getting. Mm. But there's a difference between giving a child an opportunity. If these children, Serena and Vina, Venus, had come to him at 14 years of age and said, Dad, we don't want to play tennis anymore, and he dragged them kicking and screaming to play tennis, then we'd have a different discussion to have. They wouldn't have but, made it. But the bottom line is, is he gave them an opportunity to build a landscape and a life for themselves, and what a wonderful life they've had. And we mustn't turn it into a pushy parent, we must turn it into a parent that's committed to his children, supportive. and behind him supportive, and gave them an opportunity to achieve the wonders they've gone on to achieve. Both of them. Mm. Both but, of them. But, but you and I both know, pa parents are constantly criticised for selling the dream to their children too early. But that's not... OK, but then parents... He did exactly I mean, that. But, but he didn't sell the dream to him. He gave them an opportunity. He presented and he them backed an opportunity, it up, yeah. And he backed it up with absolute unequivocal support from a father. Now, the outcome, the ends justify the means. And for every one of these stories, there may well be a list of stories that isn't as equally compelling on the outcome basis. And, of course, often what you do is you put children in with coaches and sometimes parents have to step back and let the coaches coach these kids because the coaches no know that, more. Yeah. In this instance, it actually proves the opposite. Mm. And, um, and I think there's a lot to be celebrated in this. I don't think it should be a story that's framed in a nuance of pushy parents. I think, what a wonderful father, what a wonderful opportunity he gave his children, and, and I don't hear any instances... So he wasn't pushy? No, I think he was a committed father. Get out there, girls, and practice. So, Dad, I'm four and a half. Doesn't matter. No, Get out that, there and that's practice. Setting, that's setting the the, 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 the the fabric of these children's life. I don't suppose he's put them on drills and got them lifting weights and running 220s and 440s when they were four Maybe. and a half years of age, did he? But Maybe. the bottom line is, is that you, if I've got a child and I want them to do their homework, I'm going to stand over them and say, would you do your homework, please? And you, you, your children are a product of the environments they're brought up in. In this day and age, we should be celebrating this parenting because there's too many absent parents, too many mm. parents that don't care enough about their children, and too many people that aren't focused on what their children are I doing. I think the um, the likelihood here is if they were given opportunities in lots of sports, they would have been very talented at them because they've got good genetics and great physicality and a desire to, to do well. Um, and I agree with that, presenting opportunities to, ch to your children to see what they're good at and then find their way. I was, I was given a path of support, but very little push. Everything, every time I played football, I did it, it off was, my it was own. left to you. To a degree. And if I didn't want to play, I didn't have to play. I was never pushed at all. And I just found my, I, I found my passion. And, and, and that's, I think, the more normal way to let you, you, got, you give them an, op you give the child an opportunity and then you see their passion for it. Mm. But nonetheless, parents exist in numbers who could be, well, could be deemed to be I've overly seen, pushy. I've seen, and I'm sure Simon has is at Palace at the Academy and stuff, but I've seen it through my children's football parents whose behaviour is abhorrent. It's, it's ridiculous. It's over the top. It's exactly what Simon said, them trying to live their dream through their children. And ultimately, 99% of those children fall away because they become resentful and they don't want to do it. I've seen it yeah, time yeah. and time and time but again. But undoubtedly, Danny, there'd be people around at the time when these two were four and a half years of age or thinking whatever they much. were, thinking, this guy should lay off them. They're children. Well, we don't, They're tiny we, we, kids. We don't, we don't know what he was doing. I was going to say, we're hypothesising about... He was insisting they go to practice. Right, well, at four and a half years of age, fine. And how long was he doing it for? An hour at a time? And, and then in 95, he said, look, this is going nowhere. I'm going to coach you.
Yeah, and at that particular point, that 95, they'd have been 13, 14 years of age. But they might have you been will in... be world champions. Well, he was right, and, and he should be celebrated. But it could be argued he was overly pushy. It's like but everything. Who? It's a balance. We, how can you possibly argue this? These, ha, have we heard from these children? Well, you argue a lot that parents are too pushy of kids in academies. No, I don't argue that at all. I argue that they're trying to live vicariously See, through their children. Show to us. No, but you, are you not listening? I don't. I do not argue about parents being too pushy. What I say is parents get involved in trying to create an opportunity for themselves, and parents get involved in living vicariously through their children and have expectations of Which what they're getting out pushiness. of the equation. But you, you also say they can be the hardest to deal with. Yes, because of that very scenario. Mm -hmm. You know, why are we looking at what the parents' view on this is, and when it's the children that are the opportunity? Why was Paul Stretford apparently buying Wayne Rooney's father a, a, a house because of the opportunity? Why are these Why are these lines being blurred? The bottom line is, is that parents' job. Who is one parent, by the way, to tell another parent how to deal with their own child? You've got somebody teaching somebody a discipline. Sport is a great leveller for life. It's a great character builder. It's a great resilience installer. We should be celebrating these things. We should, but there is a balance between... and, and yeah, I think a if, if you push your children too hard for your own benefit, you know, not, for, not with good intention, with selfish intention, then it the will normally dog. fail. That's right. And I think the, the, the more successful way and the more consistent way that I've seen that brings children to play sport happily and successfully is by being supportive but Unbalanced. not demanding and Unbalanced, not, not yeah. over the top because as soon as I, we see I've seen it so many times the parent that goes over the line and pushes too hard the child will fail because mm. It inevitably you become resentful because you don't want to do it. You've got to have an innate desire yeah. to want to do that sport. Yeah. How you've been given the opportunity to play that sport is generally through your parents or your siblings, isn't it? It That's is that indeed. Yes. Um, quite an incredible record when you look at it. There are 23 major singles titles, six US, seven Amazing. Wimbledon, seven Phenomenal. Australian, for three French. Children, for both uh, children to be so dominant in this sport. Phenomenal. 94 million in prize money. Yeah. It yeah. brings a really Serena, interesting... Where did it all go wrong? Go it on, brings Danny. a really interesting debate to the book Bounce about the 10,000 hours, which I don't necessarily yeah. subscribe to. Yeah. Because yeah. I think if two people have... one One's doing something for 10,000 hours and the other one's doing it for 10,000 hours, but has a natural ability to do it, you will still be better than the person that does it for 10,000 hours. And you've got to have the natural talent. That of basically course is what let me down. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.